Today is November 28th and this is the ADM Investor Services Monday morning video. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Free, ADMIS is Vice President of Grain Research and Alan Bush, the Senior Financial Economist at ADMIS. Previously, we have taped this interview on Friday mornings. However, some of our viewers indicated to us that they may be better served if we take this on Monday morning as a look ahead for the week. Therefore, we have changed our schedule and we'll be taping the segment on Monday mornings for the rest of the year. Please know that we value your feedback, so please don't hesitate to contact us with any feedback that you have. Steve, let's start with the grains this morning. Soybean futures continue to trend higher with increased open interest. With U.S. and world supplies growing and a good start to the South American crop, why are soybean prices and open interest going higher? We received quite a few phone calls from customers asking that same question. And I think there is a series of things that is causing this to happen. Number one is that uh, China continues to buy soybeans. They uh, have great crush margins and they, because of the drop in their currency, they're using futures as a hedge against their risk in case uh, prices go down or, or prices go up and prices go higher. We also note that in China, the banks that uh, loan money to these crushers are making them pay 100% of the value of the vessel. And that's a lot different than it used to be. So that adds to the buying also. We also note that um, we've seen 80,000 contracts bought in the last four days in beans. We're not seeing that open interest go up in corn and wheat. So it has to be a consumer buyer. We're also noting that in China, speculators not only are buying soybeans, but they're buying gold, they're buying copper, all these things after the election, and all these things in thoughts that, number one, that Trump will turn things around and make the economy better, but uh, number two, that commodity prices will follow in that uh, vein. And so 80,000 contracts is equivalent to 11 million tons of beans. The Chinese are going to take 55 million tons from us, and they already have 40 on the books. It's equivalent to 220 cargoes of vessels that they have bought in four days. And so it's, it's understandable that we're now 50% retracement of the entire move from 1180 down to 940 at this 1060 price level. Should that be a top? Yes. You know, the supplies are negative. But if the Chinese keep buying futures when they buy cargoes, we could still go higher. There has been some talk with the uh, potential uh, trade war with China, Mexico. Um, are the Chinese trying to get in front of that perhaps as well? I think that there's two things that could be happening. Number one, the Chinese feel that Trump is a wild card. They have no idea what he's going to do. But they could be putting stuff on the book like buying soybean oil last week and buying beans to try to narrow the gap of the trade deficit. So, so when they sit down and talk to him, it's not going to look as bad as it did before. Later in the week, the USDA will release its, release its 10 year baseline projections for U.S. crops. What is expected, and do you believe this report will impact the market? It usually doesn't have an impact. You know, what we're going to look for is 10 years from now, what do they think corn and soybean yields and wheat yields are going to be? Because if demand doesn't go up, and yields go up, we're going to have to plant less acres. And the only way you're going to plant less acres is if you take prices down. So they usually do this just for budget purposes for OMB. So it's not really a, a, a strong research-backed type forecast. But we'll take a look at it and see what they think yields are going to be like 10 years from now. Alan, copper is on track for its best <clears throat> monthly advance in a decade. Can you explain why copper is tied to the global economy <clears throat> and what type of imp implications this may have? Well, there's a reason why it's called Dr. Copper, because it has a PhD in economics. Basically, when the copper market is moving in one direction or another, in this case, sharply to the upside, it suggests that uh, economists and traders believe that the global economy is going to improve. In fact, it's likely to improve at an accelerated rate. So with copper advancing as much as it has, it's a very strong indication that the global economy is going to do very well. Are there any other markets that would be similar to copper that are a telltale sign of uh, good economics? 
Well, we don't just watch the copper. We're looking at zinc and nickel and, and a lot of these markets that we don't that often we don't look at uh, that closely. But a lot of these other industrial metals have uh, shot up dramatically recently, also at some multi-year highs. I would also add that the high tower today is suggested buying calls in cotton. It's interesting that <clears throat> the cotton market has been uh, just going sideways, but now if you think that disposable income is going to go up, if you think the economies are going to get better, we'll all go out and buy a shirt. And so the cotton market is actually moving, moving higher. There was also a report overnight that things like glass futures in China and garlic futures in China are at all-time highs. And so this also reflects the possibility <clears throat> that their economy is improving. The S&P 500 and Dow futures advanced to new record highs late last week. What are the reasons, are the reasons for this historic advance? And more importantly, will it continue? First of all, we had the low interest rate environment for the last seven years. That was the prime motivation for, for traders to come in on the long side. So low rates dominated and have taken the indices sharply higher in, the, in, the, in that period. Secondly, we have the Trump victory, which suggests that there will be infrastructure spending increases, uh, possibly to a very large degree. So that means higher corporate profits. So putting all these together, we have now an added new bullish fundamental with the infrastructure spending anticipated to grow tremendously. So the outlook remains the same. We are going to see higher prices across the board in all of the indices. This is a trend that will probably last all this year and well into next year. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar. The dollar index soared to a 14-year high last week. Do you see this trend continuing for the balance of this year and also into 2017? Absolutely. Keep in mind that the Fed is the only major central bank that is on track to raise rates. Uh, of course, they are probably going to raise at the December meeting, which is actually December 14th. And I predict that they'll raise one more time next year at least. So interest rate differentials remain very bullish to dollar. So we have to con continue to trade the greenback from the long side. I think there's a lot left price-wise and time-wise to this bull market in, in the dollar index. Of course, a higher dollar doesn't do much for the trade balance uh, normally. How do you see that, Steve? Is the high, can a higher dollar uh, dampen the amount of trade? Well, I mean, historically, <clears throat> historically, that's one of the negatives that people think about. But for grains, you know, when you look at corn, the number one buyer is Mexico, and then you're followed by the Asian countries, and, and I just don't think that they necessarily uh, look at that as far as the currency play. They're more, they need the corn. Soybeans, China's always going to buy our beans. They're the number one buyer in the world, and they'll continue to buy our beans. The only market that could be sensitive it is, is wheat, and right now uh, we're seeing a, a pickup in our wheat export demand because of quality issues in Europe and Canada and maybe Australia. So wheat's probably the more sensitive one. If the rest of the world has a supply and our dollar goes up, we're going to lose export demand in wheat. Looking ahead this week, what's hot and what's not? <clears throat> well, I think the uh, dollar index is hot. Uh, think the stock index futures will be hot. What's not? Uh, I don't think anything is not going to be uh, motivated by what's happened with interest rates. So I would focus on what's hot. Stock index higher, dollar index higher, and I guess what's not is bonds. Like bonds will probably continue to, to decline. I think when you read <coughs> the various things that economists are talking about, they think that maybe this Trump rally is a little overdone. And they believe that uh, we need a pullback of some sort, not knowing what percentage of that is. But like Alan says, commodities seem to be hot, the stock market seems to be hot, and so on pullbacks you're a buyer, and the main reason you're a buyer is that the China economy may have bottomed. And I think <clears throat> Alan has talked about inflation, and all those things are positive to commodities. So we may have uh, been a little overdone right now, but on pullbacks you should be a buyer. I know we have the 10-year baseline projections for grain this week. Any other reports we should be looking at? Well, we have uh, first notice day on the December contracts. And so, you know, with cash where it is, there shouldn't be a lot of deliveries. Uh, the registrations are down. Uh, you're supposed to sell light deliveries and buy heavy deliveries. It's the old adage here at the Chicago Board of Trade. But I think that when we look at cash-wise, um, on the bean export side, exports should start slowing down, and, and so 
eventually they may be deliveries. Um, meal is soft. There should be deliveries. There's a lot of oil registrations, but you know, with this new EPA announcement that's going to add maybe 500 million pounds of demand to oil that we weren't expecting, down the road I don't know if they're going to want to give up their oil receipts. Uh, wheat, they should deliver the wheat um, because there's just not a lot of home for it at this time. Corn, it will be interesting to see if somebody wants to deliver corn. We've got a lot of corn, but uh, it will be interesting if they want to give up those receipts. Any economic reports this week, <coughs> Alan? Well, in the financial markets, there's, there's reports every day, so I would say any any report that is happens to be bearish the stock index, I would use that as a buying opportunity. Any report that is uh, bullish for the bonds, I would use that as a selling opportunity. So there's, there's reports all this week, and, and I, would, I would just play it day by day, but continue to trade the stock indices from the long side, the dollar from the long side, the bonds from the short side, and any report that moves these markets opposite to, to uh, uh, those moves should be used as an, an entry point. Remember, the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you'd like information about the brokerage services offered at ADMIS or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.